Once upon a time, there was a little boy who dreamed of a magical city. He dreamed of a city where everyone was a little boy. Boys who liked to party. Boys who loved the sunshine. Boys who were interested in each other. This boy dreamed of a gay world. A never, never land of boys who never grew up. And then, I moved there, to West Hollywood, California, in the middle of Los Angeles, a magical city inside of a dreamland. I watch as each generation arrived by the busload. But I'm not the main character in this story. I'm merely a friend, an observer, a neighbor, there to dispense advice and high-end marijuana. This is the story of three young men who come to this city and all together they make a wish. Will they get their wish? Will they achieve their dreams? Will they crash and burn in this desperately difficult city? Well, that's the story you're about to see. much hotter. So did you ever think you were going to move to Los Angeles? No. In fact, I kind of figured it was the last place I'd move. Yeah, no one ever thinks you're going to move to L.A. Dreams and fantasies lead people here, like swallows coming home to roost. Oh, you're going to love West Hollywood. It's, it's pretty much like how we were in college, except for more blackouts, bad decisions, but with more sunshine. It's amazing. Speaking mm -hmm. of bad decisions, I think we need to watch Troop Beverly Hills for old time's sake. Yeah. We have to play the game where after every costume change, we have to take a drink. Mm -hmm. Because it's cookie time. It's, it's cookie, cookie time, time. It's cookie time. It's cookie time. time. It's cookie time. Um, uh. it's cookie time. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you've been working on that, huh? I hate to be all hoity-toity and be all L.A. on you, but we have to talk about what you're going to do to make ends meet. I'm and coming. hustling doesn't count. Really? I can't? <laughs> I figure worse comes to worse. I can... I don't know, teach step or yoga booty ballet or I don't know, something awful that we'll bring in the rent and uh, help me pay for dance class. And gas and bills and water and trash and parking. No, really, I'll be fine. Okay, I'm just looking out for you. Mm. Why am I the only one drinking? Cheers. Thank you, God, join me. Summer mm. of shenanigans. Shenanigans Again. and hooligans. All right, boys. We three are going to make a wish. And uh, what are we wishing for? Money? No. Mm, great jobs. I don't think so. Mm, world peace. Uh, that's nice, too, but aren't we all looking for love? So not sex, not hot lovers, not toward affairs, just honest-to-goodness love. What else is there to hope for in the middle of the collapse of the world's economy? Yeah. Massive unemployment and the return of 90s fashion. All right. Penny? For you? Thank you. Penny? Thank you? A penny full of happiness. Do you actually think that everybody is looking for love? Well, we did throw the coins in the fountain. The rest is Hollywood magic. Yeah, Hollywood's already starting to fuck with me. How so? Well, I've been here a week and I already feel like a different person. Look, am I gonna have to drag you out of the closet? Excuse me? We have been suspicious about you since college. Really? You and Jessica? I love her too, but that was not a sexual connection between you two. We were as close as two can be. Listen, your two best friends now are gay. You cry when you watch Swan Lake, and I can see you checking out, guys. You can? Mm-hmm. So what's holding you back? I don't know. 
my family, people's expectations of me. I'm scared. I mean, look, I just wish I didn't care what other people thought. Uh, and what if? What if what? I mean, you don't care what other people think. That's right. I don't care what people think. And we're all happier for it. Yeah. <laughs> we are. <laughs> that performance piece you did in college, uh, where you had everybody shave you one by one while you were naked, you couldn't have done that if you cared what other people think. It's about identity. It's what all my work deals with. <sighs> Who am I? Who are you? Nobody and everybody. The illusion of the self is just a performance. And you're gay. Do you find dating in LA different than dating in- Why don't I date very much because I kind of have a boyfriend? Who does anybody like LA? I'm well, stuck I here. I can't leave. I just couldn't show you to daddy. You'd be my dirty secret. You know who loves salad? My ex-boyfriend Paul. I, I did suggest it, but I didn't assume that you were going to order carb-based. Oh, do you ever wear, like, jock straps and things like that? Because I love a little, you know... Do you have a big dick? Just something ben, I want to pursue. Ben, it's not ben, a You're pretty, but don't talk. You know, a lot of people think that just because you're gay, you can't be racist. That's not true. I just don't really feel it. Like, I feel it right now with me and you. And you're so naive. You're so pretty. You're so dumb. Well, I hate a lot of different people. I hate Asian people. I have too much love to give. I actually hate gay people. You should live with me. I'm waiting for something smart to come up. I thought... Like, you say the word... And he's out. I'm flabbergasted at this. I'm actually not gay myself. I'm here in the belly of the beast. You're not gay? With, no, I'll sleep with you, though. No, it's not that I mind being gay. It's the gay world I don't like. There's a lot of shady bitches out there. And a lot of shady bitches that need to get cut. Look, I mean, there's that side to it, but... Look at the other side. I mean, if you think about it, there's something very beautiful about the gay experience. I mean... There's something very courageous about it. How? Take, for example, uh, two men holding hands in public. That's more than just two men showing their affection. They're taking stand against society for what they believe and how they feel. I mean, what could be more romantic than that? Or more beautiful? True. And still, I don't believe that gayness should necessarily be the center of one's identity. No, but it is definitely part of who you are. It's definitely part of your identity. I mean, think about it. It's kind of liberating in some respects, isn't it? Once you're, once you're out, I mean, like, you know, I mean, before you're out, you worry about everybody judging you. And then once you are, you're already going against all of that. Who gives so, a fuck if anybody judges you? Well, but that's the point. It's that once you're, once you're out and you've done all that, you don't really care about what somebody else thinks of your clothes or something else stupid like that. So in some respects, it's liberating. It is liberating. I know for a fact when I get up on stage and I do my thing, it's not a matter of, oh, hi, I'm gay. You're going to see a gay person now. It's more like, this is what I do. And if you don't like it, then go, go fuck yourself. I don't care. You're wasting my time and you're wasting your time. It's not who I am. It just happens to be what I am. And that's how I feel. And I'm done. Oh, my God. We are seriously talking about... Gay rights and deep stuff while we're at the beach. Let's forget this. Let's go for a swim. No, come on. No, I'm made of sugar. Swim. I'm swim. swim, swim, You're swim. You're my sunshine. No. told that I look like some celebrities lately. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I guess that's the thing to do out here in LA. Everybody looks like somebody. Uh, however, I don't want to be told that I look like certain people. <laughs> For example, I was at Target the other day and I was just going down the aisle, you know, buying my necessities, you know, toiletries, lube. <laughs> and um, this little girl came up to me in the lube section. No. And uh, she said, do you know who you look like? And I was like, wow, what a magical moment. No one's ever, you know, asked me that. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I don't know. I've never really thought about this. John Mayer, Ashton Kutcher, young Patrick Swayze. <laughs> and uh, she says, no, you look like Frankenstein, and ran away. <laughs> I know. 
And I thought to myself, first, A, what a bitch. <laughs> she was five. And then I'm thinking to myself, is that what I look like? Am I that guy in the bar, you know, with my friends, just like, la, 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 crush can, ah, drown child. <laughs> Hey, what are you reading? Oh, nothing. Are you reading a magazine? Or, no, 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 no. I was fine. just filing no. something. I don't know how I got there. It's oh. not mine. I don't know why. You can read it. It's fine. If no, you read just... a magazine. It's you're fine. Magazine? Are you in? Okay, hi, Jason. Hi, what hi. are you doing? What are you working on right uh, now? Right? I was um, I was just sending out the uh, cover letter for the oh, yeah, audition. Oh, yeah, really, really want to get that audition. I really yeah. got to get in there. But not yeah, without really the moon. Not, not without the moon. I, would, I, I think this is the one, I think. Um, oh, my God. Uh, anyway, this is hard. This is weird. I thought this would be a lot easier, but it's really hard. Okay. We, um, Jason, we really like you, um, but we, um, we don't really have a lot of money. So we're, like, kind of not able to, like, pay you anymore, and oh. we're, like, losing the office. Wow. You're not saying anything right now, which is no, weird. No, I, well, I'm a little in shock. I'm I mean, sorry, this is weird. We really like you. Well, my mom, My mom really likes you. Well, she used to. Am I losing my job to cocktails? We, we did wait for you for, like, 20 minutes. We waited for you. Well, I'm sorry. Know. I have better things to do than hang out with a 75-year-old woman at brunch. That's 75? Woman, have this have a name, and it's Barbara. But she goes by Barbie Girl because she's awesome. That 75 year old woman like drinks mojitos and listens to Rihanna. So back off, okay? Also, like this needs to be refilled. It's out. It's out of water. Look, there's like barely any water here. I'm thirsty. I'm starving. I guess you'll have to find somebody to fill it up because I'm not working here anymore. You can't do it before you leave. Like you can't even possibly no. do that. Barbie girl was so right about you. Well, she you said know you're what? a terrible this is person. What I'm and I said, no, he's really not. Good. He's great, but yeah, no, I'm right. wrong. I'm always wrong. That's just weird to me. How so you go fuck yourself. Why are you such a horrible a person? Time. Oh my god. Fuck you so hard. Hey, huh. look. You know whose house that was? Yo, mama's. Close. <laughs> that was Murph Griffin's. <laughs> the TV talk show host? More than that. He was one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. Really? Yeah. And wow. a gay man. Huh. Sleeping around with the likes of Burt Lancaster and Monty Cliff and any other heartthrob around. Still in a time where it was so underground, an entire career could be killed with just one misstep. Oh my god. Let's go up there, please. Okay. All right. Hold me. Oh. Who do you think is the most powerful gay man in Hollywood right now? That would have to be David Geffen. David Geffen. David Geffen. Is he married? Mm, no, I don't think so. Really? Yeah. So he could potentially make my entire career happen for me with just a few phone calls made? It's Machiavelli goes to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your hearts at the door and forge bravely onward to ultimate power. Oh, you say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> well, love, for some men, if it exists at all, is always wrapped up in prestige. Oh, Corey, spare me, please. There's a recession going on. Daddy needs new shoes. And you will be? Oh, I know what I'll be. I'll be rich, and powerful, and a complete success. I'm gonna ask you a question. Why is it that people worship celebrities, do you think? Only because Jesus is so boring. If we weren't in like such a monotheistic mess, the cup always half empty, maybe people would have come up with some more interesting gods, you know, something worth worshiping than, I mean, you know. I'm sure celebrities are perfectly nice people, but do they really deserve our worship? I'm trying to sleep with David Geffen, and I'm wondering if you can help me. Why? To be famous? Hello. Thought you knew this. It's just a weird goal. I mean, do you really want to sleep with David Geffen? Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm out here. That's why I'm doing this. I don't know if I can help you on uh, getting into bed with David Geffen. There's other people I suppose you could sleep with, but you might have to sleep with a lot. Well, then that would make me a whore. I feel like since I've been out here, I can't talk to anybody without them wanting to know what I do. And I don't mean like because they're interested and curious about my, what my personality's like. I feel like they're like, well, if I fuck you, 
Am I gonna get something? Reality is nobody really gives a shit about anybody out here. So just work your game, get what you want, and go. Okay, but love? My God, you're so mushy. You say I'm mushy, but do you really want just like all the time, just guy to guy, move up, move up? I mean, do you ever want anything more? If you want love, it'll come around eventually. Maybe when you're a lot, a lot older. I feel like gay or straight, we're built to need love. No. No. Really? You don't, you don't ever want anybody to like take care of you when you're having those hard times. It's just such a time commitment. It's just like, hi, it's you again. You're old now. No, but I mean like, what about like, okay, not just necessarily the bad times, but the, but the good times too. You want to share that sort of stuff with people. That's why people have dogs. Hey, uh, great class. Thanks. Do you only teach Pilates? No, uh, I teach a little bit of yoga and, I don't know, uh, some hip hop or something like that, but. You're a dancer. Yeah. Um, not really a hip hop dancer, actually, <laughs> but how did you know? I can tell the way you taught the class and your explanation of line and form and following through. I take it you're a dancer then yourself. I am a dancer. Huh, what kind? I do whatever pays the rent, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. A little of everything. Yeah? You're, you do ballet. I do. Um, and you do ESP, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, how, how did you know? I can, I can just tell. It's, it's beautiful. Thank your you. Your body and your You mind. don't think it read too... Like, I feel like sometimes I can't separate the dance from the teaching. Oh, no, know, no, no, no. Like I that. thought it was ac absolutely lovely. Good. Yeah. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, do you ever, I mean, what's your favorite styles of dance? I, I know you said you do everything, but... I love contemporary. Uh-huh. But I love the old Hollywood musicals. Really? Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire. And, of and course. I'm always trying to find a way to marry the two together. And I feel like the emphasis is, is on a very different type of dance here. Yeah. One of my favorite choreographers, and I was so upset she actually died today, um, Pina Bausch, do you know? The irreverent German choreographer changed the face of the history of modern dance forever. Oh, wow. She used to do these dances where people would just walk around the stage doing nothing, and then suddenly just like break out into these crazy like spastic movements and stuff, you know what I mean? And she would ask all of her dancers about their personal lives, about their pain and their romance and everything else. And then she would include it. And then the dances would grow out of that. You don't feel anything else when you're dancing? You don't like to include those things at all? I think that I feel terrible most of the time except when I'm dancing. <laughs> Tina Bausch used those feelings to create something beautiful from underneath out into her art. This is Los Angeles. We use our art to create fantasy. To what end? I mean... I don't know. Look! Swan Lake. Well... Those are geese. <laughs> hmm. I thought we were on the same page. We are. I like you. I like you too. So, what's the problem? I'm just stressed out right now. It's not a good time. That's okay. I know plenty of ways to de-stress a guy. <laughs> I know. I've been asked to uh, be a part of a dance concert coming up, and I thought maybe we could choreograph a piece together. Yeah, I'd love that. I, mean, I would love that, but why can't we do both? You okay? Yeah. That was some serious yeah. momentum. 
Tell me, have you ever done a pot of dough with another guy? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I've done some. I've done pieces with like two guys and a girl, or no, I mean, I've no, I've done a couple of things where where it's just a guy and they and they they work it in, you know, some lifts with guys, things like that. But it's it's really different, you know. It's because you just it's it's the weight. I mean, you're strong enough, but like the fulcrum points are different, the balance points are different. Yeah. Um, if it's you're lifting me, what's your experience with lifting? I mean, do you do? Have you done a lot of that? Or? I mean, I've done a lot of, I've done some partnering. I've done a lot of partnering, but never with, I guess, another guy. Okay. It is different. It's probably going to be some sort of a learning curve here, I would imagine. Yeah. Well, this doesn't look too bad. What is it? Personal assistant. What are you doing? Why are you suddenly searching for a job? You haven't worked a day in your life. Mmm, work is important. Not if you have a trust fund. Okay, jigs up. Ah, uh, no more trust fund. It's gone, and I need to get a job. But I want something where I can further my career as a performance artist. So, personal assistant. Check that one out. See, so you need to love animals, not wear fur, be able to make your own yogurt, and know the history of television. Can you make your own yogurt? I might be wrong, but it sounds like this could be Mary Reynolds. Right, of course. Uh, yeah, Mary. Who? Mary Reynolds. You know, Aqua Girl from the 70s. You never watched that as a kid? Sorry. She was my hero. She was transforming, turning into whatever she wanted, lots of costume changes. She was like all powerful and crazy sexy. Okay. You do know that the real actress isn't going to be anything like this character, though, right? It doesn't matter. She's a cultural icon. Of the 3,000 responses I got on Craigslist, you are now one of the top three. Do you know why? No. Because you know who I am. And you understand the brilliance of my contribution to society. I'm so excited to be here. I hardly know what to say. Don't say anything. Are you prepared to dedicate your entire life and service to me? Yes. Will you run any errand, any hour of the day or night, seven days a week? Yes. Will you familiarize yourself with every important person in the television industry who might be calling me, know their biography, pertinent information, and the kind of bottled water they drink? Absolutely. Will you memorize all of this information because there will be absolutely no Googling people while they are on the phone? Do you understand? You can count on me. Well then, young lady, what do you have to say for yourself? I so respect your work in film and television that no act of servitude would be beneath me. I exist solely to be your humble and loyal servant. You're hired. Uh, I also have another roommate who uh, likes to dress up. He wears nice little costumes, you know, harmless costumes, like, I don't know, one day he's Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Kids love Ronald McDonald. The next day he's Hitler. <laughs> Kids love Hitler. <laughs> Tomorrow he may be Oprah. <laughs> Maybe he'll give me free shit. Corey. Yes. Call PETA about the benefit. Check. Take my car in for detailing. Uh, Check. Find me some unpasteurized goat's milk yogurt. Where would I find that? If I knew what I'd be sending you out, call every grocery store, call every health store in LA County and find it. Go to a goat farm if you have to. Check. Here's something you should know. I have a cause. Yes. I am vehemently opposed to the wearing of fur. I expect you to understand the cruelty and the suffering that is perpetrated across these poor, defenseless creatures. I need you to, to dedicate yourself and to join me in my crusade. I need you to commit to that. I agree completely. The needless suffering of animals must be stopped. Right. We've got to do something. Okay, get to work.
I've been noticing like every day lately in the morning that you've been leaving as a woman each time. Are you only going to work as a woman these days, or? Well, this job particularly because uh, Mary was only hiring a woman. How does that make you feel? I just think that our lives have a higher purpose than to just be so caught up and have our identities so deeply entrenched in gender politics and what other people think. What kind of reaction are you getting? Um, mostly some stares, you know, from people. Yeah, a few thumbs up, you know, did a round through the uh, 99 cent store and made some people happy, I think. Oh, that's good. That, people appreciate the effort, huh? Oh, yeah, no, they do. Wow, is anybody asking for miracles? Any, uh, any uh, no. healings requested? No, no, nothing fancy. No? What's the matter? The lobsters. The lobsters? <laughs> oh, God. Ah! <laughs> lobsters do not have an automated nervous system like we do that puts them into a state of shock when pain is inflicted on them. Do you understand? Can you imagine what it would be like to, to be boiled to death? Oh, God, the thought of it. A searing violent, ferocious pain to every single cell in their bodies so that we can eat them. It's terrible. I can't stand the thought of all of those lobster tanks and all of those restaurants all over Los Angeles County. <laughs> 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 What it's okay, do? Mary. No, it's not okay. No, no it's okay. No. It's okay. Uh, we'll fight for their rights. Yeah? Yes. Uh, is there anything that I can do now? Yes. What about my lunch? I have that scheduled at uh, 1 o'clock. Don't be late on that. Yesterday it didn't come until 1.05. I'm really sorry about that. I was answering your phone at the same time. What do I pay you for, you lousy, ungrateful, incompetent piece of shit? Don't ever be late with my lunch again. Do you understand that? Yes. You may go. <sighs> darling, sweetie, sweet darling, I love it, I love it. <laughs> love me a little bit of Chardonnay. Mm. Have you had enough pets? Uh, had a little bit too much, I think. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. Just want a little more. You know, actually, this is a bit disturbing. <laughs> All you've done since you lost your job was sit here on this patio and drink. I lost my job. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to drink and be sad and whatnot. Yeah, Shut maybe. up. What if the three of us together went to an AA meeting? Why would I do that? It's not fun. Because you're kind of just like like sliding down the slippery slope of vice. I don't know where you're headed. That was too much alliteration, Quentin. <laughs> you have been drinking a lot. What, are you A&E now? Like, is this my intervention or something? It'll be like theater. I hate theater. No, no, wait, it's free. There's cookies and there's celebrities. I don't want to hang out with a bunch of sad, lonely, oh, look at me, I lost everything. Now I have to shop at Walmart and drink Listerine because my husband hides away my vodka. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. They're all sad, pathetic losers, and I'm not like that. Look, I have a swivel straw. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Good evening, guys. I am Dan, and I'm an alcoholic. Dan. Hi, Dan. Welcome to uh, the Gay Men Stag A meeting someday. So I drink to hide the fact that I have a humongous penis. I was the one kicking puppies and telling my friends they were fat. When I drink, I get really, really fun and attractive. I woke up in Lisa Lampanelli's bed staring at what I thought was her cleavage, but it was actually her back fat. I just want to be that five-year-old little boy playing Little League again. The devil made me do it. Have you ever, like, uh, had a two-hour binge on Ying Ling and then you redecorate your mother's living room with mauve acetate? The coffee sucks here, you know? When I came and I made the fucking coffee, it was good and it was on time.
Why don't we just have newcomers raise your hand and... Uh, hi, I'd like to begin. I'd like to start. I'll go first. I'd like to start this off. Hi, my name is Jake DeLongpre, and my life is shit. I've been, um, I can be found in random gutters around West Hollywood. <laughs> that don't mean that is a joke. That's the truth. Uh, my, my mom, Barbie, if you guys know Barbie, that's my mom. She's a rockin' bitch, and she's my best friend. Um, she finds me a lot, and I've been drinking, um, quite a bit, you know, um, mainly because um, I'm in a relationship with someone who doesn't know that we're in a relationship. Um, so some people say, oh, Jake, you're a stalker, and I say, oh, fuck you. Give me another mojito. Can we say that here? Can we get honest? Because I just want to be honest. You, you, just... you look like someone I've had a horrible night with. That was brutal. Awful. Just sorry. Hey. <laughs> hey, remember Dan from the meeting? Dan from the meeting now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the one. The one who's standing up there. Do you know who he is? No. Should I? Uh, yeah. Who is it? Come here. Well, excuse me, fellas. I have some important business to attend to. Good day, sir. Okay, I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, hey, hey. That, was, that was a really good share in there. Oh, uh, thanks. Newcomer? Yeah. Well, uh, welcome. Yeah, uh, name's Jason, by the way. Oh, uh, Jason, Dan. Nice to meet you, Dan. Nice to meet you. Um, so, can I ask you a question just between me and you? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but have you ever hit rock bottom? Yes, uh, that's uh, why I'm here. Uh -huh. uh, have you? Has your life become unmanageable? Well, I don't know. I think so. I mean, I don't have a car. I don't have a job. I, I haven't paid rent in three months. Wow. And, you know, I drink every day. So, But the good thing is, is I live in Los Angeles, so my career is going to take off in a moment now. It, it is the land of dreams. Uh, from yeah. my experience, Jason, uh, everything you listed uh, means that your life has become a bit unmanageable. And I'm hoping that you've come here to turn your well in your life over the care of God of your understanding. Well, I, yeah, I guess so. I'm just not really big into the whole God thing. Just remember one day at a time and uh, it'll work. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been saying all along. That's my motto is one day at a time, right? It, it is the motto. It's gotten me here for four years. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's nice meeting you. Nice meeting you uh, too. Yeah, yeah, you're very uh, inspiring. Thank you. You know what? Uh, why don't you give me a call? Sure. I like that a lot. Dan. Nice meeting you. Yeah, see you around. Bingo. Right. And that's how we roll. We roll. Mm -hmm. Well, I do. Ah, we need to catch up. I'd like to do some sort of lift right there, like maybe a like a hip, you know, like up sideways, something like that. Okay. You know, pop you up there. What? I do agree. There should be a lift right there. That's fine. I don't like to be lifted, though. Can I lift you? Okay. <laughs> you you do know I lift people for a living, right? I know. I, mean, I, I don't like to be in the air. It's a, con it's a control thing. I feel, I feel like it's a trust issue more than a control issue. All right, fine. Fine. You know what? I'll try something. And you can lift me. So I'll trust you. OK. And we'll see. OK. Yeah, it's probably better. Right? OK. Um, so, hold you know, on, let's mark this for a second. Room. Here, like this? Yes, yes. Okay. Like your arm needs to go up here, though. This here? Arm. Yes. So, like, hold on, don't, don't turn me, okay. just... Oh. <laughs> okay, that... Really? You're not trusting? Well, I can't meet any hot guys like that. Well, why not? Why are you looking? I don't know, I'm going to the bars and... I mean, I'm seeing them, but I'm just not meeting them, you know? Well, have you thought about looking somewhere else? Mm, like online? I haven't done the internet thing. What? Why not? Because um, we were living in a small town and I was still bisexual and... Oh. Still dating women. God, you were so cute and sad. Well, so, like, what do you want? What, do you want to meet a guy that what? I don't know. I, 
A guy I can bring home to mom and dad, of course. Yeah, I figured as much, and I kind of just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Hey, do you want sex now, in a couple minutes? Do you want it in hours? Would you want to get on IM and G-chat about it for a while and then meet up later? Do you want to go on a couple dates, then have promiscuous sex, which eventually leads to nowhere? Let's go. I don't know. Okay, what site do you want? What? I heard of, what is it, Adam for Adam? Okay. What else is there? There's Manhunt, there's SitOnMyFacebook.com, there's uh, Backyard Barnyard Fun, meh. There's BlackMongoloidCock.com, there's, oh my god, what is that in my ass.com, which is always a hit with the kids. There's ReachAroundRanch.com, oh, ReachAroundRanch. Why don't we start with something simple, like, I don't know, just trying to find a date. Okay, fine. It's too bad, because the other sites are way fun. Are you a top or a bottom? Um, versatile for now. Okay. All right, so let's take some naked pictures. What? Come on. No. It'll be fun. No. You don't have any naked pictures? No. Let's take some. What? No. Oh, come on. We're best girlfriends. Let's do it. It'll be fun. We never did anything like this in college. Well, because you've come a long way from Ohio, okay? Now that you're out here, you're going to have such a variety of people to choose from. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your mind. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Give me a camera. I need a camera. I'm on fire here. Let's do this. Let's do it. Here. Good, perfect. Okay, good. Now what? Now take off your shirt. Got me out of the shower. Look, I'm surprised. Flex it. I said flex it. Get the pillow out of your crotch. You don't see that. Make out with yourself. Add some tongue. Yeah, grab that butt. Proper tone, baby. Give me that little bubble butt. Give me sexy eight-year-old Macaulay Culkin. Fuck the bull. Fuck the bull. Yeah, work. Yeah, hot. Oh. <laughs> So, have you ever bought it? No. Um, actually, it's not really something I normally do. <laughs> I'm usually a top. Today's your lucky day. Can I see you again? Sure. Let's, uh, when? Let's see, how about tomorrow night, seven o'clock, Katana? Sounds good. I'll have to get your number from you before I leave for sure. Okay. He used to be a little innocent and now he's a big whore. <laughs> we go out in public and uh, we will, I'll introduce him to someone and it's literally like a dog humping a leg. He's in heat, I need to get him neutered. Uh, it's like, hey, how's it going? I'm, I'm good. How you doing? All right. Yeah, you like that? So I cut his balls off this morning. How long, um, um, quanto tiempo, uh, uh, in los United States? Allí, en los Estados Unidos, una semana. I don't know if you just said a year or a week, but it didn't sound like long. Uh, um, uh, Take, take gusto, uh, Los United States? I guess you move. Ah, Los Estados Unidos. Sí, que sí, bueno, sí, sí. Yeah. Pero. Pero, o sea, estoy demasiado solo, tú sabes. Me extraño mucho a mi, a mi familia, a mi esposa, uh -huh. a mis hijos. Estoy dando a reunir dinero. Wait, fam family? You said family? Sí, mi familia. Oh, familia. You have a, a brother, sister? Uh, a, a hermano. Hermana? Um, no, no, no. Mama? No, no. Este es mi esposa y este es mi hijo. Mi hijo. Oh. Me extraño mucho, de verdad. En the words of Donna Summer, and I quote, Enough is enough is enough. I can't go on, I can't go on without you. Enough is enough is enough. You know the rest, I'm done. I think what Jason is trying to tell you, and I'm backing him up here, we, like, never see you. Ever since we got here, you've been either off having sex or busy looking for it, and we never get any bed time. We've been friends for years, and I feel like I don't even know you anymore. Well, maybe this is a more realistic bet. Maybe the... Love band is, you know, before LA, before I learned some things. 
Every time you sleep with another guy who doesn't give a shit about you, you lose a piece of yourself. What about the fountain wishing, Ben? You're not just having fun. You want more than that. Maybe you're right. So, it's kind of a weird question for you. You ever go on any of those sites like Manhunt or uh, Adam for Adam? I've never been on Manhunt. I've been on, what, Craigslist and I don't know, I guess I was on gay.com once. Well, when you meet people and you hook up with them, does anyone ever call you back? You don't go to the grocery store to buy a car, so, you know, you don't go to a sex line to look for marriage. I think you want a big relationship, you gotta go to relationship.com or... But, it, like the other night, it went so well. Why can't I expect to hear from this guy again? Because it's a sex line, dude. What do you think? But it wasn't just sex. I mean, like, we got along, the rapport was great. Well, maybe he just thought you were cool and it was great and it was sex, and he's done. If you're gonna set it up, I'll fuck you, but only if you'll take me on a date on Tuesday. Well, then maybe you'll get a date on Tuesday. But if you're just having sex and expecting him to call you tomorrow, I mean, I'm so sure this is Los Angeles. I wasn't really expecting to meet anyone there that night. At least, not anyone I'd ever take on a date. I know what you mean. Somehow calling it a gangbang doesn't really help the romance any. You know, it wasn't planned as a gangbang, it just happened to be that there were eight tops there and only one bottom. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> you think anybody ever meets their partner at a sex party? Yeah, I know a bunch like that. Really? Yeah, what's wrong with meeting somebody at a gray sexual encounter? I mean, men fuck and men fall in love. Why can't you meet somebody? I think it's a great way to meet guys. I guess sometimes there's a connection. Yeah, and if there isn't, it's like playing a sport. I mean, I go to the gym, I play volleyball, I have sex. Really? Huh. <laughs> you seem so different from most of the guys I meet at these things. You do too. I mean, you just seem so new to all of this. I am. So what does he do? Well, he's actually got a great job. He's working for Frontiers magazine. He's, he's actually one of their head writers. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, because of it, he knows everybody. We get in everywhere. Um, he's a sweetheart, you know? Um, he can even dance well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what the problem yeah. is? What? He's a professional homosexual. He is king of West Hollywood. He writes for a gay newspaper. He has no women friends, I'm assuming, mm. and he goes out every night like it's his career. He's just gay, 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 gay. He okay. would probably make Liza Minnelli say, hey, calm down. So when'd you come out? Uh, around the ninth grade. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah. What about yourself? It was a little bit more complicated than that. Um, I'm from a Jewish background. I'm not like hardline Orthodox or anything, but, but still, uh, my father's a rabbi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And I was pretty sure I was bisexual for a long time. I even had a girlfriend in college. Did you have sex with her? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was pretty cool. You know, I mean, she was really supportive and she's like my best friend. I, I get along with girls pretty well. Yeah, I can see that. You? Not really. I mean, I have a couple of lesbian friends from work and from the scene and so on, but... The uh, scene? Yeah, you know, going out. So, you, you date a lot, don't you? No, I mean, I had a boyfriend last year. And? Uh, he's just kind of crazy and an asshole. Well, how long were you guys together? Eight months, but around month six, he was already talking about moving in together, and he was upset that he couldn't get married after the whole gay marriage thing happened. So, you know, it's just a little crazy. Especially in this town, you're interesting until you're too interested. So, you gotta be careful about it. Okay. It's, what? You need to flex it. That's like a, it's flex. No, that's between point and flex. But then it's just this 
it looks like a lazy point. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but <laughs> pretty sure pointed looks better. I look like a clown. Look. Can you give me some cool contemporary where, like, a way to land at least so I don't look like I'm just like, I just feel like right now I look like a ballet dancer who forgot to point his foot. Then point your foot. I think you should point your foot. I'll point it for you. No, no, just no, give no. Me, no. Just give me something that follows. I think, you should, I think you should point your foot. I think if that's what you want to do. I, I recently <laughs> lost my job, and I've been going out and trying to find work, because you apparently have to pay bills. And uh, I was filling out some paperwork, and one of the guys from the kitchen at this restaurant that I was working at, or wanting to work at, was uh, he came up to me randomly and was just like, hey, man, you know who you look like? And I'm like, oh. Again, John McGarston, country young Patrick Swayze. He's like, no, fucker, you look like Lurch. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, at least I don't look illegal. <laughs> After the entire kitchen staff gang banged my mouth, <laughs> I realized that I shouldn't say things like that. Oh, Mexicans. <laughs> so how did you become so successful? Oh, you know what? I, uh... I suffered. I was at the darkest point of my life, and family, friends, job, uh, horrible. I, uh, oh, uh, with your sobriety. Well, yeah, with sobriety. Right. And uh, right. <laughs> a friend of mine was sober, and uh, I called him. And I was on my knees, and I just said, I need your help. And he met me at my first meeting, and here I am four years later from my higher power to commitments to doing the steps to being of service to... Mm -hmm. To doing everything to the big yeah. book, yeah, I wouldn't be here. And that's what got you it. through all this. Oh yeah, making amends, cleaning up my past, all of it. Oh yeah, I know about that. I had to make amends with some of the stuff that I messed up back in the days. One day at a time. Yeah. So, if you don't mind me asking, how did you become so successful with your shows then? Oh, those I. Uh, you know what? I actually surrendered to the outcome. Huh. I suited up and I showed up and I worked really hard and I asked forgiveness of people that I had hurt in the past and right. integrity. I showed up with an integrity and they believed me and they trusted me and one step at a time and uh, here I am. Hmm? The sex is amazing mm -hmm. and he says we're dating. But, but, but... I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm getting lost in everything. Like, I can't get him to focus. Uh, does he have ADD? Well, everybody does, I think, these days. I don't. But... <laughs> okay, look, I feel like... <sighs> like he's putting me... Like I'm getting squeezed between all of his activities, you know? Have you said anything, you know, like intimate to him? I don't know. I mean, I love him. Oh, God, you said that? No. No, I didn't tell him. I'm not that naive. I was thinking we'd go to a sex party on the west side. I sent the guys our pictures, and surprise, they're interested. The guys are really hot. Of course they are. Look, I was just thinking maybe we could do something, you know, maybe just the two of us tonight. That doesn't sound very fun or exciting. This is West Hollywood. There's parties, sex, and fun to be had. Yes, and there's parties, sex, and fun to be had every night. Look, I'm just saying that maybe not, you know, tonight, you know? I'm, I'm not really comfortable doing that sort of thing right now. <laughs> you were comfortable with it before. Well, you know, maybe just not together, okay? Not right now. <laughs> That's exactly how boring straight people are. Well, I don't know that just fucking isn't holy to begin with, but I mean, you're the one who's going to decide what's sacred. Well, is there some sort of gay etiquette for these sort of things? We're talking about a gay relationship here. This is not... We're not dealing with 2,000 years of heterosexual conformity. I just always think it's weird that gay people want to act like straight people. I feel <laughs> like, you know... Define it however you want, but you have the freedom to define it. You don't have any rules set up for you. If I can't expect anything else out of this, then why am I doing it? What do you want? I don't know. 
just like anything else, happiness or dance or whatever. You know, it's going to be a daily thing. You want monogamy, you're going to work on monogamy, and you're going to renegotiate, and you're going to deal with it, and you're going to be turned on by everybody every day. It's going to be an interesting series of challenges. But, you know, so is every fucking thing else. Look, just do the walk with me, okay? I'll do the job right. I've turned off. I don't know. Just, can we call it a day? No. We need to get through this. All right, do it, do it. No, just, just go. Fine. Ready? Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. Planning on helping me in the lift? <laughs> Look at me when we dance. You really know Dana Geffen? Yeah, of course I know Geffen. I went yeah. to his party in the Hamptons. Oh, that's awesome. I was just gonna... Oh, I'm sorry. Ben, Ben, this is Joe, Joe, Ben. My roommate. Oh. Joe, huh? That's uh, interesting. Do you guys know each other? I think, um... I think we do. Actually, hi, my, hi, Adam. How are you? My full name is yeah. Adam Joseph Landau. Is it? Yeah. That's that's weird. You uh spent the evening with this gentleman? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking about the. Uh, you remember? Oh, I don't know. A long time ago, a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. date that I was supposed to have, and somebody, oh, maybe stood me up. Actually, Ben, I and can never explain. called. I can. Explain. Gave me the wrong number. This is what happened. Uh huh. I had a friend, they had a reaction. I had to bring him to the hospital. I couldn't make the date, and I lost her number. Oh my sure. god, can yeah. you believe that? That's horrible. Oh yeah, it's terrible. That's why you never called again, right? You never called to tell me? That, that would have been too hard, for sure. I mean, you're still a producer, right? Yeah, yeah you weird. know, that's interesting. I remember accountant. What? Yeah. yeah I... Oh, I do books. I work with people's money. Yeah, yeah I do books for movies. I have lots movies. of money. I, hmm. I do books for motion Call pictures. Call me. I live in Hollywood. You told me you lived in the valley. Corey? What's this? How dare you leave the toilet seat up in my house? Do you know that people are fired and have their careers cut short for less than this? I'm sorry. I, I, I must have been on the phone while I was peeing. You pee standing up? Yes, I do. Well, do you want to be a woman or not? <sighs> uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, no, I don't. Do tell. Well, I'm happy being who I am. I uh, like adopting the guise of a man or a woman in public, but in reality, I feel that I'm neither. I didn't know. You never asked me. Well, do you sleep with men or women? Neither. Neither. I don't believe in sex. Well, I feel like it would be a distraction. I see. I got it. That's why you're so proficient. That's why you're so productive. Cora, you're absolutely fascinating. You don't use your femininity to manipulate men or women. You don't seem to want anybody or anything. It's remarkable. I feel that I could absolutely trust you with anything. You are so pure and utterly unselfish. It's very rare in this town. Well, what are you doing? Hold on. Big deal. Pen What's it about? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Sent? Sent. Can I see it? You can. It's really nice. Thanks. What are you doing? Turning it off. Wait, you need to relax. I know, but you don't do that. I, well, I know, but, I but... That. What if someone needs me? Well, then they have to call you back. But I don't want them to call me well, back. Well, you're going to have to, because you're here with me now. Whoever needs to get in touch with you can get in touch with you later. See? Hi. Hi, I'm here. You don't relax. What? Come here. You have been tense all the time. I have been here. 
Let's we'll see. What else do you do besides all this crazy stuff? Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, I used to play tennis. Tennis is good. <sighs> A lot of board games with my brothers. Mm -hmm. Baseball. Yeah. You. Up here, what do you do? Um. <sighs> lots of sports. And um, I go running. Oh, you know, I don't know what you know what. Backgammon. I love I love my backgammon. Are you kidding? I used to love backgammon as a kid. Stop it. No, serious. Okay, close your eyes. We're closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, open your eyes. Ha <laughs> ha! Do you have any money? Uh, my, bro my brothers and I put down some good 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 dollars. Can I pay back later? An IOU. I have oranges. <laughs> Those are my they're my oranges. Okay, ready? Yeah. I love to win. Uh, I love to win. You're on. Honestly, LA dancers kind of look at those dancers and go, why are you doing this to yourselves? Really? I feel like it's a great career starter. No. And no. They make a bunch of money. No. And I don't know. I mean, and they. They're exploited. They don't, you don't make money unless you really win. And maybe if you get on the tour, but you know, it's, think about it. And so many people from LA have been in it though, haven't they? Yeah, but they, they don't end up working in the dance world. Really? No, no. Because every choreographer who's watching, they go, oh, that person can't do this. That person can't do this. That person can't do this. Whereas you get the choice in this, in this dance business to, you know, decide this is what jobs I'm going to go out for because this is my strength. Right, and we all see your weaknesses on that show, oh. and your flaws as a human being, because you know they edit it's a reality you. show. Right. Yeah, and I've never all... thought about that. What do your uh, what do your tattoos mean? Uh, they uh, I did this for my family. Oh yeah, you're pretty close to your family. Uh, I love my family. Uh, well, actually, when I was drinking. Uh, like when you were of, drinking, you loved your family? Uh, well, I, I loved everybody when I was drinking, but when I was drinking, I messed up with my family, and I, I spent years cleaning it up. But that one right there, that one means the uh, breath of God to Mom, and then that one right there is for my brother. He's, uh, he's my heart. And then on the other side, uh, respect for Dad, and then I have an older brother, and that means uh, hero to big brother. Huh. Yeah. That's nice. You, your family? I have a sister. Close? Yeah. She's married. She's a baby. So you're an uncle? Yeah. You're not, <laughs> you're not a good uncle? I'm a good uncle, I guess. I just don't... I don't know. Do you want kids? No. No. Do you? Uh, I, I do. Really? I do. Why? Uh... Because they are unconditional love to me. Huh. But what if you get like one of those evil bad seed children? Like the Antichrist. <laughs> are you an evil bad seed? Is that what you're telling me? I'm, I'm, I'm an angel. Oh, yo, I, I see some horns a little bit. Meow. 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 Cory. You come get Mary a little neck rub? Neck rub? Yes. Mm. All right. Loshi, mm. loshi. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Corey. Oh, it feels so good. Now come down a little lower. Mm, meow. Oh, Corey. Oh, my God. Oh. And down to the ass. Well, yeah, you know, as I, as I said in there, Jake, it's, 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 I live beyond my means. Yeah. It, 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 you had it, really it, good means. I had great means. Like and, and Hank and Hazel, just, I love that show. Hank and oh, Hazel, I love that and, show. It was yeah. really great. <laughs> but see, what happened show. was is I got so wrapped up in all of that. Yeah, that I'm an actor and a writer. I wrote a, a script, a screenplay of myself. If I'm playing like a really sexy character and I'm willing to like do anything, I just need a producer 
And it's sort of like I'm like willing to, uh, okay, okay, to well, put that's myself not, in a... Well, that's in, great, but that's not the premise of this program because Hazel, you asked like me to... Hazel. Well, you want me to... You talk to me about sponsoring. Sponsor. Well, sponsor. sponsor. yeah, so let me just... Okay. Producing you, What my... you need to... Well, this... Okay, it's a script. Yeah, you made a comment, Jake. I put it Jake. in a folder. I put it in a blue folder. It's a nice folder. Jake, stop. Uh, sponsorship. Uh, rock bottom, you said to me in, in the meeting. Oh, yeah, this morning I had rock bottom. I had like a rock bottom moment this morning. Okay, so what happened? I overslept, my alarm went went off, and it didn't. I didn't listen to it. And my mom was like, "Uh oh, you overslept. You hit rock bottom. Got to have a meeting. Got to uh, go to a meeting." And I figured you could be my sponsor. Okay, you live with your mom because you're with Jason. And uh, wait, you know, but how do you know that I'm with Jason? Um, because, oh, how? well, I, you know, I, didn't, I was watching you guys. At, uh, wait, 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 wait. You're watching. This is a, yeah. I saw you guys at Big Rooney Grill, and I was like, "Oh, the, what I, about that? Stop. So you and stop. Jay, what? Stop. You're you know, nice Jake. Hands. The, hey, Jason. Jay. Jake. Jake, I'm Jake. Jake. Jake, Jake. But Jason's great. He's on my mind too all the time. <laughs> I, I, I think about Jason all the time too, so that's no, crazy. I, I, don't, I don't think this okay. is going to really work. So right? here's the thing. You stop you me. me. Call oh. me. Call me. Is if, that if acid? You need anything. You no, it's no one. Stop. This is not going to work, sponsorship. Call me if you need anything. I'm sure there's somebody else in the rooms that will help you. Thank you. <sighs> You've been stalked before, huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's the MySpace people and the Facebook people. Yeah, you do have quite the following on there. You have to t just take it seriously only to a certain extent. I mean, it's flattering, but when someone says that they love me, I don't believe it. I, I think it happens so much in, in dating world, too. You mean that you had the complete wrong idea of who they were because you just put a picture of them ahead of you. You had this idea of them and not necessarily what they were. Totally. They want you to like them, too, because people always want to be better than what they are. So, how was the party? The usual. And the one before that? Before that. Oh, Monday night, we went to, we went downtown to Mustache Mondays, and then came back to WeHo and went to the Standard for a couple hours. Then, went to an after party in the hills. It was amazing. Amazing. Good. You're not even gonna ask me about my week, are you? Oh, um, sure. Do anything for fun lately? Yeah, actually. I start rehearsing my new dance piece. Oh, yeah, cool. You should try out for So You Think You Can Dance. I have. Oh. Look, you know how much I like you, right? Yeah. I like you, too. That's funny, because I'm not feeling it from you. I mean, it's like, it's like your Facebook page. You got all these pictures of everybody on there. You got all these parties. I go with you. I don't see a picture of myself, ever. Well, there's an audience for my Facebook page. And they don't even know you. Relax. It's not a big deal. It is to me. Look, we hang out, we have fun. Why are you trying to create drama? I'm not creating drama. Look. I'm just saying, look, I don't think, I don't think we can do this anymore. I don't think I could see you. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. That's it? You're not even gonna try to save it? Nothing? Not an, not an, oh, Ben, I'll miss you, or a, hey, let's try? Nothing. What are you looking for? Oh, Ben, I'll miss you terribly. I can't live without you. I need you in my life. Is that what you want from me? You're such an asshole. Look, what more do you want? I don't know, but I want it with you. Mary, there's uh, something I need to tell you. Yes? I'm quitting. No, you're not. Yes, I am. But why? Well, uh, this experiment has come to an end, and I need to start a new chapter in my life. But what about me? You need to start a new chapter in your life, too. No, I don't. 
Yes, you do. Well, if that's the way you feel, get out. Goodbye, Mary. I'm just waiting to hear from something from you. It's waiting for what? Cool. For one, you promised me that you were going to help me get my own show. Wait, 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 what did I promise you? I can't promise that you, I'm going to help you pitch a show idea. Well, that's what I can't, you said. Jason, I can't do that. What experience do you have producing, much less starring, directing, and acting in your own show? Are you kidding me? I would be great. Of course you'd be great. But no one is going to go out and give you your own show right out of the gate. Jason, it doesn't happen that way. Wow, well, thank you so much for that confidence level. Well, stop it. I believe in you, I do, you're, look at me. You have something. You're handsome, you're talented, you're funny. Thank you. Jason, everyone has some sort of talent. You just have to learn what that is. <laughs> well, I know what to do with it. I just wanna get paid for what I'm doing. Why do you constantly need my validation? Because you are the only one that can really help me, all right? You're the first person in Los Angeles that I've actually met that can actually help me do something with my career. Wait, wait. I thought we were working on a relationship. But obviously this is a business partnership oh, for you. Come on. I get no, it. Dan, come here. You know that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean, Jason? If we weren't in a relationship, would you still believe in me? Of course I would. Come here. Well, that's what I want to know. Come here. of this. Anytime there's like a, some sort of isolation, like looking, I, I'm not thinking right, left, I'm thinking connect, 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 so connect to me at that moment. Okay. Six, seven, eight, sharp, like boom, eye to eye. Okay. Yeah, and I think that even helps, like intention. I don't know if it'll look good flat to the audience. Two, three. Like that? What if it's, right. a, what if it's a, you took your, like a, your right leg back, six, seven, eight, sharp, one. So the line is soft, but we get there like this. fast. Yes, hit so, the accent. So do the seven, do you, give me seven, eight. Six, seven, eight sharp, one. Okay, I kind of have a confession to make. Ooh. I'm pregnant. Again. <laughs> I know, right? Is it a geffen? Shut up. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I, I don't really think I'm an alcoholic. You made a commitment. That's serious. AA saves people's lives and you're totally disrespecting. I just don't think my life needs saving. I mean, I don't really think that I am like those people who go into those meetings and talk about being unmanageable and reckless and destroying everything and, and just have absolutely hit rock bottom. I, I, I'm not like that. Well, then why do you keep going back? It's, it's really interesting and kind of touching to hear how... It has changed those people's lives. Okay, I have an idea. You guys are my best friends. And well, okay, you're more like my family. But I, I, I kind of want to know if you would be interested in, I don't know, possibly going to a bar with me. Let's have a drink, just one drink, one drink, and that's it. This and, is the big idea. Yes, let's just have one drink uh, and then we'll go oh, home. Yeah. And you know, if I cannot have a drink for about a week, then I honestly don't think that I need AA. Do you think one drink is gonna tell you that? Well, yeah, just one, that's all I need. You're having one. Well, yeah, but I'll probably have one tomorrow and that doesn't mean that I need to be in AA. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, but you were having more than one. You were having a bottle of Jack. Well, I've been going so... for three months, so I think I can, I think I have a little restraint now. Well, then it sounds like it's been working for you. Okay. There goes nothing. Now remember to sip slowly. Thank you, Miss Manners. <laughs> oh. See, not bad. God, I almost forgot how good that tastes. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. Can you give me a second? Give me your jacket, give me your jacket now. Jason. Hi. Hey. What, what are you doing here? 
Uh, no, I was gonna ask you the same thing. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm, you're having a meeting. You? It's so weird, because I'm having a meeting, too. And, and you're drinking. Uh, actually, this isn't mine. This is my friend's. No, actually, it is yours. I just saw you drink it. Ah, uh, good one. I'm just surprised to see you here. You know what? You, could we possibly talk about this some actually, other time? Actually, we can't, because that'll just give you a little more time to create some more lies. Okay, uh, our program is about anonymity, and right now we're in public. Shut up! You're just here to, uh, sleep your way to get you, what, your so-called big break? Uh. First of all, Jason, you don't have the talent to create a so-called series because that would mean you would have to work, and if you have to work, that means seeing something to come to fruition, which means you would have to have integrity. And you don't even know what integrity means. My God, you're in a bar drinking. You've been lying to me. All these months you've been lying to me. I thought you were sober. I knew you weren't sober as far as your dreams. They are not happening. Not with me. Well, I'll find it with someone else then. I was going, I was walking down the street over in Hollywood and I saw this homeless woman taking a piss like there was no tomorrow in broad daylight, I might add. <laughs> she was fierce. And uh, I'm walking down the street and she just looks over at me, you know, while she's popping her squat. Hey, Dracula! <laughs> I look like three dead people. <laughs> One of them just happens to be immortal, which is great. Never in my life received a text like that before. Goodbye forever? What were you thinking? That I couldn't live without you. Of course you can live without me. What I want to know is who called 911? I did, of course. Who else was here? Happy to say they came right away. You could have called me, you know. That's just it. You weren't here. Well, I'm here now. Oh, Corey. I had the most horrible dream. My father left when I was eight years old, me and my mother. And before he left, he was very cruel. And he was absent most of the time anyway. Anyway, after 60 years, he came back. Just there he is, clear as day. And he hands me this note, and I uh, try and open it, and I can't. And I look up, and he says, Mary, I love you. And then he went away. And uh, I came to the realization that I've been an empty shell for a long time. I've been living my life, going through the motions, but there hasn't been any reality to it. It's been inauthentic. You've reached a place of, of emptiness, and that's okay, Mary. There's a beauty to that. This is where your life really begins. I'm very tired. I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Oh, Mary. It's never too late to start again. You have everything. Millions of people all around the world adore you. They adore her, the one on screen. Do you know that you are the only... <laughs> 
authentic relationship I've ever had in my life. We're the perfect couple. Sorry, I think some of my stuff got mixed up in your laundry. That's cool, man. What's going on? Uh, can I ask you for a favor? Sure. Thanks. Um, I think I just, uh... Will you just hold me for a minute? Yeah, of course. Thanks. You okay, man? You had a stressful day at work, or...? No, it's not that. It's just, uh... I, I, I haven't seen another... body in front of me in so long that it just... When I saw you, I was just... taken for a second, and I just... I just need... I think I just need to be held. It's okay. Well, why don't you... Why don't you just go have some sex? No, I, I don't want sex. I just, uh, that's, sex is dark. I just, I don't want that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be dark. It can actually be really loving if it's with the right person. I know, I just, I don't even want the right person. I, I'm too independent. I don't, I don't want anybody. I just, I just want this. Okay. <laughs> You know, you've got to be the easiest gay man to please. Oh, contrary, my friend. I think I'm the hardest. What if... What if you put your hand on my heart and chest? Okay. Okay. It makes me want to go like this. Oh, like that, Reach. Like that. Yes. <laughs> Choreographically. Oh, okay. What if we grab? Here? No, that isn't. I'm doing the ballet dancer, that's right. <laughs> Should I do that? Yes. Okay. It's better for the line. All right, you're, you're, you're right. You're so right. Look at that in the mirror. <laughs> okay. Okay. What if we pull each other through? Pull, pull it. Here. Here? Or... Yes. Yeah, that's great. I feel connected to you in this. Mm -hmm. My question is so we're on the same page. What is this about? What, are we, what story are we trying to tell? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just kind of written itself, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think I know, and I think you know, but I think maybe we should just <laughs> say, it. say it. I think it's about a, definitely about a relationship between two people. Yes. You know, in Judaism, we have a, a, a belief that when, before you're even born, that you have another half. I mean, you know, like a soulmate a sort soulmate. of thing. But actually the person that you're, the person that completes you, I know it sounds so cliche, but, um, but that really, you know, fulfills the, the parts that you are missing. You know what I mean? Sure. And that, that part of your journey in life is to find that person, that you find them in the right time and everything like that. Is there anything like that in the Mormon background or do you personally believe you know, in that? There's something kind of in that vein, but kind of without the romanticism and the love part. And how do you feel? I mean, do you still believe that? I'm discovering that, yes. I, you know, when I moved out to Los Angeles, without going into any detail, I went a little hog wild. Um, and I think I stepped away from that notion, but, you know, I'm coming around to the idea that there is someone meant for us. I'd like to believe that there's someone that's going to complete me. I think I know what you're talking about. I want to make love to you. I'd like that. What's your status? I'm positive. Oh. And you? I'm negative as far as I know. 
Is that a deal breaker? No. Bump in the road? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm always gonna worry about myself and you and condoms. I wouldn't blame you if you just wanted to be friends. I just want to know more about your history and how you've been handling all this. It's okay. When did you find out? A year ago. On my 26th birthday. Oh, shitty birthday present. Yeah, tell me about it. I knew I would never have sex again. Yeah, but... If we meet in our hearts like we do, I mean, really, doesn't it go beyond the physical? I would like to believe that there's more, Is there, especially for a gay man. Can there be more? The chances are up to you guys. What are the chances at any point? This is not a world where you can bet on relationship. You just have to do relationship. It's a yoga. You know, every day, that's the game. Uh, there's plenty of good chances. Everybody's falling in love right and left, you know, but what is it, 75% of marriages end in divorce? So there's challenges to the game. Sex and love don't go together for gay men, do they? Maybe not. God knows I've thought of it before. But I feel like it's different with us. I feel comfortable with you. When I dance with you, I feel amazing. Okay, so what do we do now? I don't know. Maybe a partnership. We have that creatively. Yeah, I do. Why can't we have it romantically, too? Thank you. 
an interesting summer, boys. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what's next. Well, I think we should all make another wish. Oh my God, <laughs> Ben, let me guess. Let's wish for love. Mm, not just love. Yeah. Something that each of us love. I love cock. <laughs> mm. How about a penny full of happiness? Yeah. Okay.